Hello and welcome to the Friday, December 23rd, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, just a quick uh, follow-up on a story I mentioned yesterday. Uh, Rapid7 and CrowdStrike uh, did observe a uh, workaround for some of the Outlook Web Access uh, server-side request forgery uh, vulnerability or uh, the uh, proxy not shell vulnerability uh, workarounds that Microsoft recommended. Uh, well, uh, Guy thinks that he saw some of these requests also in his honeypots. Definitely something that you should be aware of. And again, it does not affect you if you're fully patched on your exchange servers. This is something that you should be worried about if you're relying on any of the published workarounds to protect yourself and not using the patch. And we got today an early Christmas gift from the Cerde Initiative. An advisory published today by the Cerde Initiative makes public uh, kernel a KSMBD use after free remote code execution vulnerability in Linux. It scores a perfect CVSS score of 10. Now, this is certainly something important. Uh, why is it not sort of a huge deal? Well, uh, the vulnerability was originally reported uh, to Linux in July, according uh, to a link in the advisory. Uh, update was actually made uh, public in August uh, that should fix uh, this particular vulnerability, but it wasn't really sort of acknowledged as a vulnerability back then. Also, KSMBD, it's an implementation of the SMB version 3 protocol. It's sort of a replacement for Samba, but it's relatively new. Um, again, it's a kernel module, so basically moved uh, the user space Samba code sort of into uh, the kernel, of course, with a complete uh, rewrite. Most systems still use Samba instead of KSMBD. KSMBD uh, was just released about a year ago. So if you have a system that's older than a year, it probably is not running it. Also, make sure that you're up to date. Uh, like I said, the patches may already be available based on that uh, patch that was released back in August. But this is something you certainly should be watching next week. There are a lot of unknowns still here as to how this could exactly be exploited and uh, how severe this will be sort of against a real system in a normal configuration. The SMB23 disconnect uh, command is uh, what is being exploited here. And then we got an update from LastPass regarding an incident uh, where some uh, cloud systems that LastPass used were compromised. Uh, now, a couple reasons I mention this here. I usually don't mention breaches unless there's sort of a good lesson to be learned here. Lesson number one, the reason these cloud resources were compromised was because in an earlier compromise, well, uh, credentials were stolen that gave access uh, to uh, these systems. After a compromise, it's always very, very important uh, to change authentication tokens and uh, passwords. But of course, uh, if you don't make that easy, it's probably not going to happen. Secondly, they're now saying that some of the encrypted uh, password uh, dumps that basically they stored for customers were stolen. This can be a big deal, but it does not have to be a big deal to you. These are encrypted and the uh, encryption key is derived from your passphrase. That's the entire idea of the security model that the LastPass does not know your passphrase, so they can't decrypt your passwords. But in the end, it all depends on how strong your password is. They do enforce some minimum strength requirements, but uh, the one thing they can't really protect you from well is uh, that you're using this password they're using for your password wallet uh, for other sites where it may be stored in the clear, where it may get compromised. So uh, the one thing I really want to bring home here is if you're using a password wallet like this, I like them, I recommend that you're using them, but be absolutely certain that you have a very strong, unique password for this password wallet. Ideally, that should be the only password that you need to remember. So 
not too hard to make this a real long and a difficult password. I'm also perfectly okay with you writing down this password and locking it in a safe at home just in case you do forget it or uh, someone else in an emergency or so needs to have access to it. And in case you had any issues accessing our site uh, today, uh, we did have uh, some smaller sort of uh, denial of service issues uh, yesterday and uh, today. So that uh, caused some problems, sometimes also with login, but mostly with our API. If you're using any scripts uh, to get data from our API, uh, please note uh, at a uh, email address or some way to contact you as part of the user agent. That way, you know, if you innocently uh, cause some problems, uh, we can uh, contact you. In this case, it uh, was more sort of a continuation of a denial of service attack that we have seen in the past with a couple new uh, tricks, but should have it mostly under control at this point. Well, that's it for today. Don't want to run over too much and uh, nothing really important enough uh, to delay any vacations here. So uh, hope everybody's getting some rest this next week. Uh, I'll uh, take a week off from doing this podcast. So the next podcast will be made live for Monday after New Year. So this is the last podcast of the year. Well, uh, you all know uh, my wish for Christmas uh, to you is lots of good, good reviews in your favorite podcast platform. At the very least, just uh, click the five stars in Apple's uh, podcast app. Thanks and uh, talk to you again next year. Bye.